we now have a pretty cool implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm. So set the start, set the goal. And now you will see not only all visited nodes, but also the actual path that is taken from start to go. Let's set a different goal. And now let me show you something interesting. Say if you go from here to there, then you have this total cost. But as you see, Dijkstra's algorithm not only expands towards the goal, but it also expands, of course, the same amount in every direction. And so if I put an obstacle here, this will not change anything regarding the total cost. It changes the search expansion down here, of course. But if you watched here, this frontier didn't actually change. Now this changes when I start to force the minimum path to get longer. Then not only this path is longer, but also, as you have seen, if you watched carefully, the set of visited nodes expands in all directions. And so this means it gets very costly if the path to the goal gets longer. Especially, say, you have a kind of a dead-end road. Then you see search space expands. So that for this slight detour here, we have to expand a huge number of cells in this left area here. Also, let me show something else, which is quite interesting. Say our goal is here, then we get this path. Now, if I block this path, you would assume that the set of visited cells gets larger in all directions, but it doesn't. This is because due to our distance measure, all those paths have exactly the same distance until we hit this upper bound here, in which case the set of visited cells expands again. Now just for fun, let's do our maze again. And indeed, as you see, the algorithm works and shows us the shortest path from start to the go. Now let's come back to this situation where we go from the start to the goal and we see that the algorithm expands all the nodes not only in the direction towards the goal but also in the opposite direction. So this seems somehow strange because by the very moment you're almost here you also look at nodes which are, for example, here. And so it seems not possible that when you're almost at the goal here, that then another node, which is expanded at the same time back here, will still have a chance to come up with a path that reaches the goal when this node is so far away. In fact, the direct distance from here to here would be about two times the distance from star to go. So how can we improve our search so that nodes are expanded in the direction to the goal and not so much in the direction away from the goal. Let's have a look. Let's first have a look at the Dijkstra algorithm once more. So at a certain point in time, when we started at the start node, we arrived at the situation like this, where this is the set of visited nodes and all the nodes which are close to the boundary have a similar cost. And now if we ask ourselves if we should add this node next to the set of visited nodes, we check for the minimum cost. Well, the cost in this case is the path from that node to the start. So using Dijkstra's criterion, we will have a cost of this node, which we will call G for the moment, which is the cost from start to end. And this is kind of backwards looking, because if this is the goal, then obviously the algorithm is expanding in the wrong direction which is due to the fact that any distance to the goal is not part of our computation here. But it makes sense to use this cost, because this is actually computed by the algorithm and it is exactly known. Whereas I don't have any information regarding how far it is from this node to get to this goal, because I didn't see the goal yet. So now let's think about a different solution. Let's say we'll make a greedy solution. So say I start here. And my goal is to get here, with nodes and edges being around here everywhere. 
So what about the following? When looking at the direct neighbors of S, I pick the one which gets me closest to G. And then starting from that node, I'll check the neighbors. And again, I pick the one that gets me closest towards G. Again, I check the neighbors, pick the closest one. And again, pick the closest one. And I reach my goal. Now, if you look at the boundary of my set of nodes in Visited, you see that we expanded far less nodes than we would have expanded in the case when we had used the Dijkstra algorithm. So in the greedy case, we use the following cost. We'll just say this is h. Well, that's the distance to the goal. But we don't know the distance to the goal, so an estimate distance to the goal. And what we used here is the direct line, without knowing how the underlying graph actually looks like. Now, we expanded far less nodes here, but on the other hand, is the result still optimal? 